Have you ever read about the reasons they attacked us? We were not attacked because of our actions. They, they attack us because we've been over there. They want to kill us because of who we are and what we stand for. We're there occupying their land. And if we think that we can do that and not have retaliation, we're kidding ourselves. That kind of isolationism, sir, is what caused World War II. It's an extraordinary statement as someone who lived through the attack of September 11, that we invited the attack. I believe very sincerely that the that the CIA is correct when they teach and, and talk about blowback. It's become kind of an intelligence term, and it generally applies to an intelligence operation that has a result that you don't anticipate that is unfortunate. One of the greatest frauds, I think, being perpetrated on the American people is the discrepancy between what its intelligence community collects and what they're told by their political leaders in both parties. And so the American people remain in the dark and really have no idea what this war is about. There is a direct connection between the conflict in the Middle East today and what happened over 50 years ago. You can even take it back to, to when the CIA started intervening in there in 1953 when they overthrew the elected government of uh, Mossadegh and the reason why he was overthrown was because he was going to nationalize the, the state oil resources and that would have affected British and American companies. So it was a classic case of using intelligence resources to have a business outcome and uh, that overthrow put Iran on a course where eventually it wound up with the Shah who was authoritarian and any any possibility that the, the country would develop in a democratic way was, was basically stifled. And then, of course, we had the Iranian Revolution. The Ayatollah Khomeini creates a violently anti-American government. In the CIA's after-action report on what they did in 1953 in Iran, they said this would lead to what they called blowback. The U.S. then made a puppet out of one of the CIA's assets in Iraq, Saddam Hussein. Saddam was anti-Iranian and very fearful of the Iranian Revolution and went to war with Iran. The war went on throughout the 1980s and was extremely bloody. As Iraq began to lose the war, President Reagan sent Donald Rumsfeld to tell Saddam the U.S. would covertly supply him with intelligence and weapons. This is why so many Washington insiders have said we know Saddam had weapons of mass destruction. We have the receipts. See, and this is, all, this is all pure blowback, where you started with an intelligence operation, and the intelligence operation produced a certain result you thought was okay, the Shah, and then you wind up with a result that's pretty bad. Saddam remained a U.S. ally right up to his invasion of Kuwait. The U.S. feared he might also invade Saudi Arabia and threaten the largest oil reserves on Earth. So U.S. troops were stationed in Saudi Arabia. Osama bin Laden said he resented that the government of Saudi Arabia was using Americans to defend Saudi Arabia against Iraq. The U.S. began to fear losing its position in Saudi Arabia. With the second largest proven oil reserves being in Iraq, the U.S. now turns on its former ally and prepares the American public for the thought that Saddam must go. In the years preceding 9-11, Osama bin Laden was a young freedom fighter who promised American officials he'd help them to oust the Soviets from Afghanistan. The CIA began secretly arming the Mujahideen. The American Stinger anti-aircraft missile, the weapon most credited with giving the Mujahideen an edge in the war. Al-Qaeda then became a group that had been empowered by the United States. Following the defeat of the Soviets and the fall of the Berlin Wall, Capitalism was triumphant, and communism was gone. But in 1991, when the United States invaded Iraq for the first time, we established military bases in a land revered by Islam. Every suicide terrorist campaign since 1980 has had as its central objective to compel a democratic state to withdraw combat forces from territory 
that the terrorists prize. This war is not against Americans because we're Americans. It's against the it's it's motivated by the activities of our government and its allies in the Muslim world. Furious at the American government for desecrating their lands, Bin Laden and his maniacal associates began plans that would lead to the clash of civilizations that culminated in the tragic events of 9-11. They don't come here to attack us because we're rich and we're free. They come and they, and they attack us because we're over there. Mossadegh was freely elected, okay? He served almost two years. We went in there and caused the demonstrations that led to his overthrow. Now the Iranians remember that, you know? They remember that. Yes, there was blowback. Uh, the reaction to that was the taking of our hostages. Most of the American people are, are totally unaware of what really goes on with our foreign policy and of the way we're irritating people. We're creating a lot of enemies around the world. Maximum covert operations uh, to block and disrupt the Iranian program, uh, including uh, taking out their scientists, including breaking up their systems, all of it covertly, all of it deniable. Iran is a country that has been at war with us since 1979. The senator is wrong on his history. We started it in 1953. The uh, blowback came in 1979. It's been going on and on because we just plain don't mind our own business. That's our problem. We spend $1.5 trillion overseas in wars that we don't need to be in, and we need to cut there, and then put this money back into our economy here. We would profit from getting out of most of these places. The threats would actually recede, because right. our very presence in many places is unwanted. He's the only one who's hawkish on defending Americans in America. A major waterway, the Suez Canal, or the Panama Canal, fell into hostile hands, what would you as Commander-in-Chief do, if anything? I'd uh, look at it and study it and find out if it was a threat to our national security and go to the Congress, find out if they want to declare war, who the enemy is, and take care of it and get it over with. You could solve the problems if we follow our Constitution, go to war, only when we declare the war, go in and win them and get them over with. You get a declaration of war and you fight it and you win it and get it over with. Many of the nations that we've been protecting would have to invest the money to protect themselves. I'm not a leftist, I'm, I'm a very conservative person, but I really do think we need to look at our actions. Actions promote reactions. One of the really appealing things about Ron Paul is that he understands the importance of history. He understands the importance of seeing where you're coming from. Thomas Jefferson lives. He's Ron Paul. We, as a group, now have a greater moral responsibility to act than those who live in ignorance. Once you become knowledgeable, you have an obligation to do something about it. If Americans actually listened to the veterans that they claim to respect so much, their attitude would change. But the thing is, Americans want to honor the veterans in like a very cursory way, you know, putting a yellow sticker on their car, having a little parade or welcome back. But they don't want to honor the veterans by really like listening to what they have to say. When I came back, you know, after my first appointment in 2007, I was really excited to see this guy in the presidential debates uh, by the name of Ron Paul. He talked about an idea called blowback, which was that uh, our foreign policy has repercussions. It means a lot to go out and defend our country and make those sacrifices, and it's not something that should be taken lightly. I support Ron Paul because I believe he's the only candidate with the fortitude to actually stand by the Constitution. In 1999, my desire to defend the Constitution and fight for my country motivated me to join the United States Army. In 2011, that same desire motivated me to leave the Army. And now that desire motivates me to support the only presidential candidate who will truly defend
defend the Constitution. When you sign up for the military and you sign the dotted line, you're there to defend America and the Constitution, and Ron Paul is the only person that's been doing that for a while now. I support Ron Paul because he would take our troops out of harm's way. We only have those rights that we are willing to defend. And I think Ron Paul understands that. He has so many of us standing with him. His calls to bring the troops home uh, should be taken very seriously. They can no longer use this rhetoric of support the troops because what the troops are telling you, both in Iraq and those who return, is that they don't want any part of this. They want to come home. Ron Paul will restore America. He will restore the Constitution. And he will truly support the troops by bringing them home to defend this country. I have worked at seven presidential campaigns, and I have never served anyone <laughs> more incorruptible than Ron Paul. I sleep better at night because he's a principled person who believes in the Constitution. It really says a lot that the politically aware people in the military, those that are paying attention and engaged in the political process, are supporting someone who advocates an immediate withdrawal. Our campaign got more money from the troops than all the other candidates put together. get involved in these wars and just bring our troops home. There's a pretty good chance you're under the age of 45. Turns out older people don't watch much YouTube. Go figure. But here's the thing. Older people, like your parents, do vote. And they're not going to hear this message from CNN or Fox News. So here's how we get Ron Paul elected. Click this button to send an email with a link to a presentation made especially for people over the age of 45. This presentation we've created convinces 40% of people over the age of 45 to support Ron Paul. So it's crucial you pass the message along. In Iowa, Ron Paul won 50% of the youth vote. That means Ron Paul is the future of the Republican Party. So how can he get so much support? Because people who do their own homework online see right through the mainstream media and big government Republicans. If all of us email five people over 45 years old and send this video, Ron Paul will win the nomination and the presidency. Sharing this message with the people you know is the most important thing you can do.